dance is so powerful, it doesn't have to be your profession or anything, but dance really changes lives. That's why I was so passionate about spreading it here, because I just imagined me spreading it in different parts of Egypt and, and seeing how it will affect you know, the women here and how it will affect how they, they feel about themselves. They will feel healthier, they will feel more empowered, they will feel more accomplished. I studied engineering uh, and I worked as a petroleum engineer for four years. However, right now I'm a professional dancer and I'm the first person to bring dance hall to eat. Actually, one of my dreams was to work like in an oil field and be like the only woman there. I managed to get a job in the biggest oil field company in the world. However, always in my breaks, I used to go to like a dancing school or something. I remember the first thing I did when I went to Kuwait, which is the country I worked at, was like I, I just searched for the dance studios and I, I contacted everyone who was dancing there and then I went to Los Angeles for the first time. I actually went for work. I visited Millennium Dance Company. As soon as I walked into class, I just felt like everything was natural to me in a way. Yani the movement itself was so natural. I felt like I was picking up fast. I felt like it was just flowing through my body. Even like the teachers and everything, they told me that I have like the natural groove. I just felt, let's see if I can take like some time off from work. So I took like a, a month unpaid actually, and I stayed more and I took different classes and different like intensive in Los Angeles. I have a very strong intuition when something is going towards the right path. All the circumstances in the world, they feel like they're driving me towards that goal. If I wasn't that person, I would have done the logical thing and yeah, save for a while and then go later. But something told me that I have to go. And thankfully I went and I quit my job, I, it was June 2019. I spent three months in Jamaica, two months and a half in New York. And when I came, by the time I came to Egypt, it was December. Two months later, Corona happened. I feel like if I hadn't done that decision at that time, I might have never, I've never traveled, you know? And I ended up staying for three months, learning everything about dance hall and they dance all day, they dance in the street. Mostly there are no studios, they just place in the guest house just for foreigners, but Jamaicans themselves, they just they dance in the street, they do everything like natural. I feel like things just align. And, and when I came here, I was like, okay, I want to teach it. And I just really want to spread that culture to people because I feel like they would connect the way I connect it, you know? <laughs> after class yani i see it in their eyes that they really feel they feel very refreshed they feel very pumped up of course my classes are very energetic when i teach a class i want to give people a sense of jamaica not just a, a class and there's a part in dance hall called female dance hall a style created by women for women the women are very empowered in the way that they feel like okay this is my body and i'm gonna embrace everything and every part of it when you see like jamaican women dance their dancing is very raw, it's very natural, it's a bit sexual and they feel like this is how I express myself, you know. For me the most like empowering thing that I saw is that there is no one size or there is no like any kind of shaming when it comes to Jamaican women. Every single woman is so strong and is so powerful and they, they all can do everything, literally. In some places women they still feel like awkward even dressed certain ways or even like expressing themselves in, in different ways. That's why I feel like dance doesn't have like really one language, it doesn't have one country, or it doesn't have one specific style or anything. It's, it's international and it's universal because at the end of the day, if we don't even speak, if we dance together, we're, we can connect. The kind of dancing that I do, I'm moving my hips and I'm moving my waist and I'm, I'm not really doing bordu classical ballet or doing haiga and nas arfeha awi. Uh, I still get restrictions, I still feel like I'm censored a little bit and I still feel like I have to be very careful because people still, I mean, we still have the people in Egypt or outside of Egypt, or outside of the Arab world, they feel that, no, there are things that I'm not aware of, there are things that I'm not aware of, because it's fun. And that's what we're trying to change. A big goal for me in dancing, to be able to, for example, when I feel a certain emotion, to be able to really, really portray. Also, it's not just the visual that people see, it's visual that people get to interpret in their bodies.